Hello. So this this video is just a very short introduction to the video that follows, because basically the video that follows I recorded at um, like 4.30 in the morning one day last week when I woke up and just had some shit to say, so I just gibbered off um, in front of the camera. And so basically what it covers is my journey from say, th from about three years ago, like having a realisation that I really didn't like myself, like I didn't understand myself. And I knew there was sort of trauma I'd been through in my life that I didn't understand and hadn't processed and stuffed it down. And yeah, that realization, something's got to change. Like I can't live the rest of my life not liking who I am and not being able to sit with who I am. So I kind of dived in to like this shit into myself, um, started this, I guess, this kind of like epic journey where I kind of feels like I went across like an, an ocean and now like three years later I might have found an island or I might have found like solid land you know big land mass but right now I feel like a sense of like deep like love and compassion towards myself and like, like mentally feel super super strong and better than I ever have really um, body, uh, not not so much. Crohn's is not or whatever. IBS is not playing ball, but yeah, like I'm in a place where I just feel like really, really kind and compassionate towards myself. Um, and so this video is a summary of kind of that journey and things that have happened, starting with therapy, um, and then you know things that followed, a bit of a domino effect of things that followed, and just kind of recapping that. And some of I don't know like what it's worth maybe the lessons and things I've learned along the way and some some ramblings as well as usual. Um, I am um, topless in the video. You can't see it, it's not it's not graphic. Um, and also obviously you can see my fucking crazy shit hair at the moment. Um, but yeah, I don't know. See what you think. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Um, if if I take myself back three years. I was living by myself in Surbiton, in southwest London. Um, I've been living by myself for about six months. And I was, at the time, I was sleeping with like multiple girls. I was using um, alcohol as a crutch. Um, like, I was just in a very, very bad way. Like, um, I was stressed, like I almost got a girl pregnant, I was just, I, I don't know, I just was in a really fucking, just like degenerate place where getting drunk or trying to hook up with some girl was that I was like, I was I, I literally trying to escape myself all the time, I was trying to like not have to come back to the flat by myself because then my thoughts would go like crazy but equally like i needed that i needed to be by myself to to like to like try and figure out those thoughts because like that's me that's who i am like i can go get pissed and i can go sleep with some girl but i'm going to come back and be me and so i had that kind of thought a few times and then when <laughs> had a few points to forget about it it wouldn't go away, so I, I, I just knew I needed to do something. Um, so in August 2019, I, I was going to Vietnam with my friend. So, again, probably trying to escape those thoughts, just get away. But it was sick, you know, I thought it was the best time. Um, so yeah, me and my friend went, um, and it was really good. But I knew before I went, I'd said to myself, when I get back, I'm going to start therapy. Like, I need to be able to just be in a flat by myself without trying to avoid myself like what the fuck man this weird like the, the, like no you, you are yourself you have to be able to sit with yourself so i went to vietnam i came back and i started getting therapy and I, after a few sessions after probably the first session i was like this is amazing, I can just talk freely, I can get all these thoughts off my mind. Like, man, I'm going to be cured in two months. <laughs> Fucking hell. Um, so I went and I got therapy. And things did feel better. I felt like I was able to, like, 
articulate thoughts and like figure out like what I wanted to resolve in the future. Um, yeah, and and like like almost immediately started to feel lighter and more myself. And so I carried on with therapy for a few months, like and tried to. I guess I think I tried to sort of live a bit more like purposefully and like um mindfully as well so i was like kind of stop chasing girls i still drank a lot but st but stopped yeah and was able to sort of like meditate a bit more and just be more kind of like in tune with myself i guess i'll, I'll try to anyway and so yeah doing therapy for, for maybe like a month or two and i met this girl who was like perfect just like beautiful and like funny uh like that was a crazy chemistry like a really good spark um it's just lovely to just yeah like could communicate well uh yeah just like a good good girl and i remember like meeting her and thinking in the therapy sessions like to help my therapist like like i've met this girl who's like perfect and uh, who's perfect and I kind of wish I'd listened to my intuition but I think shit happens for a reason and my intuition was like too soon bro too soon you got shit you got you've got to work on your fucking mind before you look for anyone else to compliment your life like you've got to do that it's too soon and I was like but she's fucking perfect <laughs> like, let me have this um and so I didn't listen to my intuition or figure out a way to talk to her and tell her that this is the shit I'm going through, blah, 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 like, going to have to take it slow. But instead, jumped feet first into the relationship. Fast forward, like, six months, seven months, and then, like, locked down and shit, and the relationship crashed and burned. And I was like, fuck. And I, I cling to the relationship, too. I didn't want it to end, like, because it had kind of, like... I guess in some ways what it had done was it allowed me it got me off the hook from doing the hard work that I had to do because it was like well you've got this beautiful girl like what more do you need what more do you need to do and I was like so it kind of let me off the hook and I don't mean that in like a mean way, like I had to do this work and if I didn't do this work, I'm not valuable, valuable as a person. But like I knew inside of me, inside of me, I knew what I had to be doing. And I chose, and I, and I, th there probably was a way to navigate it by talking to, to the, my ex-girlfriend and explaining to her, but like the, my intuition was telling me like, no, you are not in a place relationship. Do the work you know you needed to do. And I ignored that voice. And that's a theme that I've learned over the past few years. Don't ignore the inner voice. Like, don't, like, it's trying to help you. So, well, in my case, so I ignored it. Relationship crashed and burned. I tried to cling to that relationship because I was like, that made me feel good but actually what I needed to do for a period of time was feel awful and I don't mean that in like a kind of like um self-flagellation like is that, is that the word like like beating myself up but I needed to sit in those fucking horrible feelings that I knew I had inside me so I cling to race shit for a bit um this takes us to like summer 2020 um and um that's when i think i kind of had a bit of a breakdown like realized that like nothing there was no escape from myself like even the most like like it, like even the most like like i've got to say like and I, I don't say this is like any kind of like i'm not over it because I am it's more like even the most perfect girl in the most perfect relationship 
couldn't like save me from myself like alcohol couldn't save me from myself um going on benders and cocaine and shit couldn't save me from myself and and like like even like like going traveling and seeing the world and this like i'd always come back to myself and so i think in in 2020 summer 2020 what i was starting to realize was that like this is me man like i am me and no matter what i do externally Like, I'll always come back to me. So, like, over the past two years, from summer 2020, I've just, like, it's been hell at times, to be honest. Like, I have journaled, like, I've journaled, like, all of this. I've, and I've worked out what I've kind of done, like, over the past two years. Or, or include I'll get two or three years so with, with therapy that's three years and journaling is two years um, meditating I've been trying to do on and off since 2017 um, and all of these things help you become more at peace with yourself and so with journaling like that's for me actually journaling is like my most useful most helpful and so generally I've done these like 22 notepads 22 notepads I've journaled. Honestly, through the journaling, man, I've, I've sobbed. Like, times, like, past traumas coming up, intu like, intuitively through, the, through the journaling, just, just stream of consciousness, just not even thinking about what I'm writing. Memories coming up. Um, it's really tough stuff, man, coming up. Um through the therapy just learning to sort of i don't know get some structure and get another person's perspective on some of this stuff because what that that is really useful as well like being able to talk through the therapy and get another perspective perspective and then like meditating just to just to get the thoughts to shut the fuck up for like 20 minutes like um like in the, like i love i, I love med between 20 minutes like an, an hour i think is probably like the max for me like i've done like two three hours before but like then it becomes a bit of an in endurance thing. Well, for me anyway, um, I'm sure a few more practiced in it. So yeah, so I've done these um, three things like consistently. Like I've been like working out my brain and my mind like a motherfucker these past like two or three years. Like constantly, I think podcasts and, and YouTube videos and reading as well. That's played a massive, massive part. Like I say. Similar with the therapy, like getting another person's perspective, realizing other people have been through this shit, realizing other people have realized they could not sit with their self for, they could not live by themselves because their mind drove them fucking crazy. Like, like, I hated myself. Like, when I take myself back to 2019, 2019 me, like on the surface, like looked well put together, nice haircut, like you know, like smart clothes, like cool trainers, <laughs> whatever. All of that shit, like good, like good job, like ambitious at work. And I'm not saying I'm not any of that stuff now, but like that stuff, like in my mind, like having like a nice haircut and like it, like. It mattered because it mattered what other people thought of me. Like, it really, really mattered what other people thought of me. So if I had a good job, people would think well of me. If I had a nice haircut, people would think well of me. If I had a good, good shirt, whatever, blah, 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 people would think well of me. And it was, like, that mindset. That, like, I had to figure out as well. So, like... Why did I care so much about what other people thought? I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, so through the therapy and the journaling and the meditating, I knew I had these themes I needed to deal with. 
And I was like plugging away, honestly, like I say, man, that sometimes over the past two years I felt so fucking lost. I was like, what have I started, man? Because, I mean, that was the thing about, like, 2019, me and before. At least I was kind of, like, stable. Like, I didn't have these, like, internal fucking, like, like existential crises going on 24-7. And that is literally what the past two years have been. Like, a fucking, like, fuck, man. Like, who am I? Like, who am I really? Like, do I do the things I want to do? Am I fucking... Am I, like, becoming the person I want to be? Or am I just fucking following the crowd and, like, scared of, like, what people think of me? Like, who am I? Who fuck am I? So, 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 yeah. Two years of just, like, I've got to say, man, like, don't get me wrong, like, real high points, man, when I was journaling and I had a realisation or meditating and some vision came to me or an amazing therapy session. Like, I had one therapy session where she, where my therapist, Sam, did hypnotherapy on me and I met my dad my dead dad my dad's been dead since 2006 and I met him and I was able to just like and I was sobbing during the session and I was I said I had all these things I wanted to say to him when I met him but all I said was dad I'm sorry and I love you and it just fucking like the emotion evaporated from me it was beautiful so um was I? So yeah, so I've had high points over the past two years. But generally, it's felt like a fucking struggle, like honestly, man. I can't tell you how many times I've cried over the past two years. Just, just cried. And all of that, if, like, crying is, like, supposed to be bad, but it's, man, I fucking love crying now. Like, it's, when I cry... It's like, fuck, that needed to come out, man. That need, that emotion, that needed to come out. Like, it was a fucking, like, when I cry, it's a success. Because I'm like, man, I was holding on to something, and now I've just let it go. I don't know what it was, necessarily. But I know I've just let something go. And that is fucking, man, proud of you, bro. Proud of you. Like, fucking cry and let that shit out. So... Um, and you don't need to, you don't need to fucking show off about crying like me, like I'm saying this to the, guy, the dudes out there, just fucking go cry in the bathroom, man, cry in the shower, like wherever you need to cry, but I mean, I'd recommend telling someone you trust, but just get it out, like, like you don't have to fucking be a, an extrovert, fucking show off like me, but just still get it out, man, get those, like that is trapped emotion, it needs to come out, okay, I'm talking to you. Dude who don't, doesn't think he can cry. You can. And you should. Alright. So yeah, high points, low points. But generally it's felt like a fucking struggle. And that's like where this fucking... Like, if you look at my other video I did about the psychedelic experience. That's where that felt like so... Like, spiritual and divine... Divine... <laughs> Um, and mystical and like the universe fucking <laughs> conversing with me because if I I feel like if I'd done that like two years ago it would have certainly because these are powerful shit like it would have done something I mean like it would have helped me and it would have moved me forward but my feeling is that like all the like the meditation and the therapy and the journaling and those elements put me in a right frame of mind. Like I, th I th maybe I could have done it earlier with the right guidance and the right support, like you know, like a like the right ritual and the right shaman and the right like like someone who knew what they were doing with psychedelics. But but like I wasn't I, like I didn't know what to do how to do that. I, you know, but like for me to do it by myself, like I felt like all of that. It's almost like the, um, the psychedelic experience was a cherry on top. Like it brought everything together. And I've been into that. You know, I've been into sort of what that was like. So I won't rehash that, even though I could fucking, you know, I love, I love talking about it because it was such a beautiful, lovely experience, man. Like it really was. Um, so what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say 
But in the past three years, I've gone from not being able to sit with myself to fucking loving, to not, to not, to not being able to sit with myself, to probably being quite resentful and hateful of myself. To absolutely being able to sit with myself and who I am. And fucking like, so like, so like deeply in love and compassionate with myself. And like what I've been through and who I am now and who I'm becoming. And like so supportive of who I'm becoming too. <laughs> like I'm like, yeah bro, you want to do that? You fucking go and get like my biggest fucking fan. Like, not in, like, and I hope this doesn't come across as arrogant, because I don't feel arrogant. I want everyone to succeed, man. I want everyone to be the best version of themselves. I really do. Like, genuinely. Like, I think everyone's got it in them. Everyone's got some innate thing in them that they should be and become. And and they just need to maybe let go of some of this shit that's, that's like, the drag. And then they'll just fucking catapult into that person. Like, like, like... Like, the, the caterpillar doesn't know what the fuck it's doing, but it's always going to become the butterfly. Always. Like, that's going to happen. But it's probably wandering around thinking, I'm a fucking caterpillar. Oh, fuck, man. It's just sort of crawling on fucking leaves. That's what I'm going to do. And, but it doesn't know that it just needs to fucking persevere. And and it's, it's going to become the butterfly. The acorn is going to become the oak tree. Like, and I feel like that's... That's us too, That's us. as humans, that's us too. We are going to become, we've just got to stop thinking, but I'm this, but I'm just going to be this. All these limiting beliefs we have, stop us becoming who we are. Anyway, I'm ranting. Um, yes, so I won't go beyond 20 minutes. So yeah, 2019 me, confused, lost, scared. He had a sick beard though, and he had sick hair. Look at this shit, man. Anyway, I'll leave you with that. Catch you later. Bye bye.